This is the story of a ship. in full marching order. Cool, look at that. Come in, the water's lovely. Go on, look at them. Somebody must have blown a whistle. They're on. There are a lot more kites to port, sir, and some bigger transports. Right, shift to the big transport. Aye, aye, sir. Check, check, check. Shift target right. Follow TBI. Torpedoes, the transport, sir. All right, Torp, you can get your own moldy off this time, but not more than two at any transport. Aye, aye, sir. Flags make to the division train tubes to port. Aye, aye. Ready, port. Main office, make Tommy Tommy port. That's got him. Shoot when you see the whites of their eyes. Open five, one over there. Forward, forward. That you, quiet do. Torpedoes fired, sir. A fish have hit, sir, and one transport has blown up. There goes another. 
big stuff. The rest of the division are doing well. There's been an enemy destroyer, sir. Right. Engage her. Aye, aye, sir. Check, check, check. Ship target left. Follow TBI. Ten to one, they were all Germans. Never get the macaronis to tackle a dangerous job like that, not for love nor money. Go on, the ITIs will do anything for money. Ah, anything but fight. That's why they were so lousy in the last war. That's on account of their warm, languorous southern temperament. <laughs> okay, okay, sir. Thanks, Nutty. Thank you. Here comes the dawn of a new day, Flex, and I shouldn't be surprised if it were a fairly uncomfortable one. Yes, sir. It's a very pretty sky, sir. Somebody sent me a calendar rather like that last Christmas. Did it have a squadron of dorniers in the upper right-hand corner? No, sir. That's where art parts company with reality. Yes, sir. Major right, sir. Cigarette? Thanks. Aircraft inside a stand, sir. Angle aside, 2 old. Looks like a couple of squadrons of Junkers 88s. Starboard 20. Aye, aye, sir. Starboard 20. Come on, blast on the sir. side. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Aircraft inside bearing green 170 angle of sight, 2 old. Short range weapons. Aircraft inside starboard. Stand by for dive bombers. Well done. 
We've got him, but I'm afraid he's got us too. Midships. Midships, sir. Carry on firing. Here comes the next wave. All guns are still in action, sir. <laughs> from the engine room, sir. The telegraphs must be shot away. I'm afraid we're going over. Pass the word for the hands not of the guns to cast loose the car that floats. Abandon ship! Southwaite been sighted yet? No, sir, but it's just on 10 o'clock. Stop that hammering for one minute, Edgecombe. I can't hear myself think. Oh, aye, aye, sir. You better tell number one to fall in the hands on the quarter deck. Aye, aye, sir. Shall we have it on the desk or the shelf, sir? Shelf for the moment. We'll have the usual one on the desk when you find it. Waiting dress, sir? Yeah. Yes, sir. Good, give it to me. Mr. Satterwaite's coming on board, sir. Does number one bring him down? Yes, sir. Hands all up? Yes, sir. Good. Mr. Satterwaite, sir. Good morning, Satterwaite. Good morning, Captain Kinross. Everything in order? Certainly. Well, we better get the little ceremony over and then we can go on deck. Were you satisfied with the full power trial? Yes, she's a well found ship. We'll be hosting the ensign in a couple of minutes, Edgecombe. You better get your cap and go on deck. Aye, aye, sir. Now then. Are you prepared to take over the ship, sir? Yes. I'll sign for a now. Watch your head, sir. Watch your head, sir. Watch your head, sir. Smoke if you like, Edgecombe. Oh, thank you, sir. Will you have one, sir? No, thanks. Not at the moment. Heard from you, Mrs. Lately? Yes, sir. I had a letter last week. One of the usuals, full of complaints. Why, what's wrong? Well, mother was took bad again, so I had to go to hospital. That old woman's always in trouble. If you ask me, I think she enjoys it. What's the matter with her? Well, last time it was a back, sir. This time it's a stomach. It seems she can't keep anything down. And if I know, it's not for one of trying. I should think you'd be glad to be going to sea again. <laughs> That's putting it mildly, sir. <laughs> Hello, darling. Thought you were never coming. Everything under control? Oh, far from it. We've been in an uproar all day ever since your telegram came. Oh. Oh. Oh, it. <laughs> We've been waiting for hours and hours. My wanted us to go to bed. We wouldn't. We saw the ship, Daddy. We saw the ship. We took our tea on the cliffs and saw it go by quite close. Not at Larry Her. Oh, that's right, son. She looked beautiful, Teddy. It was thrilling. How fast was she going, Daddy? Was she going 40 knots? Oh, good heavens, don't you think about 20? But she can do more than that, can't she? You bet she can. You might take the car around, Edgecombe, then you can give Edgecombe a hand with the dinner. Aye, aye, sir. Good evening, Edgecombe. Good evening, ma'am. I hope it's a good dinner. An absolute mistrust. Can I tell you what it is, Mummy? Of course you can. It's a surprise. She mustn't fall in mushrooms. Oh, but you keep still, there's a dear. How long have you got? Until the morning. Can we come to the dock 
kill tomorrow and see you, huh? I'm afraid not, son. I should be too busy. We're commissioning, making a rush job of it. Well, Mummy promised... Oh, that, that's enough, Bobby. You heard what Daddy said. But we shall be able to come on board before you go away, shan't we? Well, we'll make time somehow. When, Daddy? When, when, when? Oh, Bobby, don't be so persistent. Children, you know, it's really dreadfully late. You really will both have to go to bed. Oh, Mummy. Daddy will come up and say goodnight to you before dinner, if you're quick. But I want to hear about the ship, Mummy. I'll tell you all about it in the morning, Bobby. We'll have an early breakfast and you can fire as many questions at me as you like. If you'll be good, do as your mother tells you and go to bed now. Can I ask questions too? You never do anything else. Go on, off you go, both of you. I'll be up in ten minutes. Promise? Promise. Are you coming up too, Mummy? Yes, darling. All right, come on, Abby, I'll race you. They've been wild with excitement all day. Darling, you must be exhausted. I get you a drink. What would you like, whiskey and soda or a cocktail? Well, seeing as how it's a gala evening, let's have a Kinross special. I guessed it. It's all ready, only wants the ice. I made a private bet of myself that you'd forget to lay in any quantra. Wrong again. I had a sort of feeling this was an occasion. With a trial satisfactory, darling, will you please? More than pleased. She's a lovely ship, beautiful manners, does what she's told without a murmur. Why are you making such a rush job of the commissioning? Oh, I don't know. I like getting things done quickly. Is that the only reason? We're living in strange times, darling. It's as well to be prepared for anything. Yes, I suppose it is. Nothing to worry about. No, of course not. Here, try this. It may be a bit too sweet. My love. My love. Just right, not a bit too sweet. Miss me? Of course not. I never gave you a thought. I've been much too busy. That's right. What's the surprise for dinner? Grouse. Maureen sent us a brace from Scotland. Good for Maureen. That's a girl with a really fine perception. <laughs> a bit high. I expect you'll like that, won't you? That new dress? <laughs> oh, no, darling, I've had it for ages. I swear I've never kept eyes on it before. Only about 20 times, my love. Perhaps it's you that look new. As good as new, anyway. Is there going to be a war, do you think? Yes, I think there is. Oh. No good worrying about it till it comes. Not much good then, really. No. Don't be sad. I'm not sad, really. I'm just sort of gathering myself together. Any more of the Kinross special left in the shaker? Yes, of course. However busy you are, and however quickly you've got to get your commissioning done, I should like to come on board just once before you go to sea, just to give the ship my love. You'll have to, whether you like it or not. My cabin's got to be made presentable. Does the chins look all right? Absolutely first class. Good. We'd better drink these up quickly and go up to the children. Then I'll be ready in a minute. Here we go. Here we go. Swim to the float! Swim to the float! Brandy in my jeans.
I shan't have time to do more than look at the headlines. There you are, then. Don't look too good, does it? Oh, you can't believe anything they say. Look at all the fuss and fume we had last year. Everybody flying about in aeroplanes and making speeches. After all that, nothing happened. Nothing happened to us, dear, but a hell of a lot happened to other people. Do you really think we're going to have another war? Looks like it to me. Well, I'll believe it when I see it. If you ask me, you're going to see it quicker than you bargained for. I don't believe that Hitler would be so silly. What would he expect to gain by having a war? World domination. That's what that little rat's after. You mark my word. Well, they haven't got enough to eat in Germany as it is. Mrs. Blackett's nephew, you know the one that travels in underwear? Come back from Berlin two months ago. He said they was all half starved. Well, I can't help what Mrs. Blackett's nephew says. I think we're for it. Well, if we have another war, I'd give up. See? After all we went through last time. All you went through. I like that. Well, you was too young and innocent to know anything about it. Don't talk so silly. You know perfectly well how old I am, and it's no use pretending you don't. Well, you'll always be young and innocent to me. Well, I indeed, now. If you ask me, you've got a hangover from all that beer you put away last night. I must be going now. Is Mother coming down? I promised I'd call her. Wait a minute. Mother? Walter's just going. you better come down as you are. That will be nice. Will you get ashore again after commissioning? Before you go to sea, I mean. That all depends. You won't forget to put those bulbs in when the right time comes, will you? Doing your bulbs. Goodbye, old girl. Why, Walter Hardy, whatever is the matter with you this morning? Anyone would think he was going away forever. Well, you never know. You ought to be ashamed of yourself saying I such things. Take the page and Morris and give them a piece of my mind. Here comes Mother. That spirit lamp of mine will be the death of me yet. What's the matter with it? It blew up again. Frightened the witch out of me. You will put in too much methylated. Anyway, I don't see what you want to go fussing about with spirit lamps in your bedroom for. You could easily pop down to the kitchen. Nobody'd notice you. I've made me own tea in my own bedroom all my life, and I don't see any reason to stop now. Yes, but that doesn't happen to be your own it's bedroom. It's my spare. And if you go on blowing things up in it every five minutes, it won't be fit to sleep in. Well, then stop it, you two. I've got to go now. A nice thing. When my own daughter starts criticizing oh, me. Oh, shut up, Mother. Say goodbye to Walter. That's what you came down for, isn't it? Will you get ashore again? All depends on Hitler. Well, who's he think he is, anyway? That's the spirit. <laughs> goodbye, Mother. Look after Kath for me, and don't you two go nagging each other from morning to night. Nagging? Oh, I like that, I must say. Come on, Kath. Goodbye, old girl. Goodbye, dear. Ship's company! Halt! Ship's company at prison, sir. Thanks, number one. Stand them at ease. Aye, sir. Ship's company, stand at ease! Break ranks and gather on. Can you hear me all right in the back? Yeah. Good. You all know that it's the custom of the service for the captain to address the ship's company on commissioning day, to give them its policy and tell them the ship's program. Now, my policy's easy. And if there are any here who have served with me before, they'll know what it is. Are there any old shipmates of mine here? Oh, glad to see you again, Reynolds. And Adams. And Blake. And Coombe. Who's that small fellow hiding behind the chief stoker? Parkinson, sir. Parkinson, you were coxswain of the all-comers whaler in the Valletta, weren't you? I was that, sir, when we won the all-comers cup in the 1936 regatta. And fell into the ditch when you got to the ship. <laughs> well, there are enough old shipmates to tell the others what my policy's always been. Reynolds, Adams, Blake, Coombe, Parkinson. What sort of a ship do I want the Torrin to be? A happy ship, sir. That's right. An efficient ship, sir. Correct. A happy and efficient ship. A very happy and a very efficient ship. Some of you might think I'm a bit ambitious wanting both, but in my experience, you can't have one without the other. A ship can't be happy unless she's efficient, and she certainly won't be efficient unless she's happy. Now for our program. You've most of you seen the commissioning program of the Torrin published in Plymouth General Orders. And you will have noted that this allows the cut every three weeks. Well, you've all read your papers, 
And you know that Ribbentrop signed a non-aggression pact with Stalin yesterday. As I see it, that means war next week. And so I will give you not three weeks, but exactly three days to get this ship ready to sail. None of us will turn in or take our clothes off or sling our hammocks for the next three days and nights till the job's finished. Then we'll send Hitler a telegram saying the Torin's ready, you can start your war. You four bring in the sugar, you six gas masks, you four nutty and canteen stores, and I'll join you and bring in the rum. Up England, you've had your hour. It's my turn now. The area is an announcement. At 11 15, that is in about two minutes, the Prime Minister will broadcast to the nation. Please stand by. I am speaking to you from the cabinet room at 10 Downing Street. This morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock, that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. You can imagine what a bitter blow it is to me. Well, that is exactly a bank holiday for us. To win peace. She's still afloat. Yes. And all who saves her. Bob Beth is shifted. And all who saves her. God, who alone spreadest out the heavens and rulest the raging of the sea, who has compassed the waters with bounds until day and night come to an end, be pleased to receive into thy almighty and most gracious protection the persons of us, thy servants, and the fleet in which we serve. Preserve us from the dangers of the sea and from the violence of the enemy, that we may be a safeguard unto our most gracious sovereign lord, King George, and his dominions, and a security for such as pass on the seas upon their lawful occasions, that the inhabitants of our island may in peace and quietness serve thee, our God, and that we may return in safety to enjoy the blessings of the land with the fruits of our labours, and with a thankful remembrance of thy mercies to praise and glorify thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
You will now sing the carol on the back of the hymn card. <laughs> Kids been at it all day. Beats me why their mothers let them do it. Oh, it's the Christmas spirit, Mum. I'll give them Christmas spirit. Coming home with their feet sopping, getting colds, and giving them to everybody else. Now then, Mother, this is the time for goodwill towards all men. Can't have you grumbling just if it was an ordinary day. Me grumble? Well, I like that, I must say. I remember in the last war spending Christmas in the Red Sea. We was coming home from Aden. Hot. You could have fried an egg on the deck. The Red Sea can be hot, all right. So can the Persian Gulf. Was out there two years ago in the Worcestershire. The fridge went wonky and everything went bad, including the language. Oh, dear. Certainly see life in the big ships. We don't do so badly in the small ones, you know. Oh, they're off again. Stop them, somebody. I'm not starting anything. It's a darn sight more lively in a big cruise than a destroyer. It stands to reason, doesn't it? You don't do no such thing. You're a Marine, you are. You don't know nothing about destroyers. What's the matter with the Marines? Well, Bert, I'm afraid I'll have to tell you. Where would the Navy be if it wasn't for the Marines? If there wasn't a Navy, there wouldn't be no Marines. Oh, shut up, you two. Who cares, anyway? Well, that's a nice way to talk, and no mistake. You, the mother of a sailor. And the mother-in-law of a Marine. Pass the port wine and don't talk so silly. <coughs> I'm as dry as a boat. Mum's quite right. What's the sense in arguing? We wasn't arguing. We was having a friendly discussion. You'll be saying next it was a friendly discussion last night in the Green Men. Why, you had the old place in an uproar. Bert, I'll give you a toast. The Royal Marines. God bless them and a an happy Christmas to every man jack of them. The Royal, Royal Marines. Marines. Royal Marines. Thanks, Shorty, old man. I respond to your toast in a fitting manner. And on behalf of my corps, of which I'm justly proud, area, area. I give you all destroyers and the Torin in particular. May our shadow never grow less. It never will. Destroyers, I should like to take the opportunity of this festive occasion to drink the healths of one and all present and to thank a kindly fate for so arranging that my ship should have to come home for boiler cleaning two days before Christmas. A bit of luck which I think any sailor will tell you is little short of a bloody miracle. Walter, can you? You know I don't like you using that word. Be that as it may, Kath, that's a highly expressive word. What's more, that's been bound up with naval tradition since times immemorial. I have heard it whispered in the RAF. Well, be that as it may, I would like to add that I consider we're all... very lucky... to be all together on this happy day, taking into account the fact there's a war on and the whole of civilization happens to be trembling on the edge of an abyss. There now. What did you say, Kat? I only said there now. Well, don't say it again, dear, because you know it only puts me off. <coughs> What are you giggling about, Frieda, if I may make some bold? N nothing, really. It's just the way you talk. What you young flippity gibbets don't seem to realise is that this is a very important war indeed. War or no war, you certainly like listening to the sound of your own voice, all right. Well, let him get on with his speech, Kev. Try and stop him. I will treat these paltry interruptions with the contempt they deserve and go on to propose the health of one who's very dear to me. She's a creature of many moods and fads and fancies. She is, to coin a phrase, very often uncertain and coy, hard to please. But I'm devoted to her with every fibre of my being. And I hereby swear to be true to her in word and deed, so help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, HMS Torrin. HMS, HMS Torrin. Torrin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the king. The king. The king. The king. You promised to pull the first one with me, Mummy. Come on, Mummy, take a strong grip and pull. Come on, Eric, gal. <laughs> enjoying yourself? Very, very much. That's absolutely worth it. You ought to have a hat made like it. Doesn't the tree look sweet? Alex and I spent hours fixing it. It's the best Christmas I've ever had. Is it? Yes. Not whispering, you two. You know, Robin, you really ought to have put them next to each other. <laughs> we ought to drink to them. 
Come on, everybody. To the newly betrothed. The newly betrothed. What's betrothed, Daddy? The beginning of the end, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, on behalf of my fiancé and myself, thank you very kindly. As Flags and Maureen are so bashful, I think it only right and proper that you should make a speech, Alex. Oh, no, honestly, I couldn't. Come on, Alex. Oh, Teddy, I'll never please. Oh, dear. What am I to say? Happy Christmas. Just you wait. <laughs> Come on now, silence, everybody. Her Worship the Lady Mary is about to declare the bazaar open. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him get you down, Alex. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll begin by taking my husband's advice. Hooray! And wishing you all a very happy Christmas. I'm sure Elizabeth and June will back me up when I say I'm going to deliver, on behalf of all wretched naval wives, a word of warning to Maureen, who's been unwise enough to decide to join our ranks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dear Maureen, we all wish you every possible happiness. But I think it only fair to tell you in advance exactly what you're in for. Shame, shame. Speaking from bitter experience, I can only say that the wife of a sailor is most profoundly to be pitied. To begin with, her home life, what there is of it, has no stability whatever. She can never really settle down. She moves through a succession of other people's houses, flats and furnished rooms. She finds herself having to grapple with domestic problems in Bermuda, Malta or Weymouth. We will not deal with the question of pay. That is altogether too painful. <laughs> what we will deal with is the most important disillusionment of all. And that is... Stop her, somebody. This is rank mutiny. <laughs> and that is that wherever she goes, there is always in her life a permanent and undefeated rival, her husband's ship. Whether it be a battleship or a sloop, a submarine or a destroyer, it holds first place in his heart. It comes before wife, home, children, everything. Some of us try to fight this and get badly mauled in the process. Others, like myself, resign themselves to the inevitable. That is what you will have to do, my poor Marine. That is what we all have to do if we want any peace of mind at all. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you my rival. It's extraordinary that anyone could be so fond and so proud of their most implacable enemy. This ship. God bless this ship and all who sail in her. Yes, Best ship I ever served in, sir. There goes me too, sir. <laughs> Makes one feel sort of lost, doesn't it? Very happy and a very efficient ship, sir. Thank you. Better wipe your face, Edgecombe. You don't want to get that oil fuel in your eyes. Aye, aye, sir. Well, you know what I like now? Nice hot cup of tea. I'd like a nice beer myself. Look out! Here come the bastards back again. Keep your heads down and get as low as you can. Miss Butterfingers! <coughs> Got it. I spoke too soon. Get you badly. Don't rightly know, sir. Knife somebody. <coughs> Cut it deep, Captain. Hit a mother with a baby in your arms, you would. Oh, look, boys. Shot through the heart. <laughs> I always did hate the sight of blood. He's a rag, somebody.
Part of loving cap, isn't it? Never know your luck. I always say travel broadens the mind. Now then, saucy, you keep your hands to yourself. Want a drop, dear? No, thanks. Come on, it won't hurt you. I'd rather not, thanks all the same. I don't like it. Oh, fancy that now. If it's a sorry, I'm sure. If she doesn't want it, she doesn't have to have it, does she? Don't you think you are, anyway, Father Flanagan? <laughs> Here, play an hymn, there's a dear. I didn't know we was in Sunday school. <laughs> <laughs> Some people don't know when they've had enough. What was that you said? You heard, you ain't got cloth ears. Here, miss, you've changed place with me. No, it's perfectly all right, really. Now, come on, come on, you've been more comfortable in the corner. I'll be ever so much obliged, I'm sure, if you change places with me, too. My mother always warned me never to sit next to sailors. Pity she didn't warn you about a few other things while she was about it. <laughs> ah, shut up, I do, you pal. You never fair. Life's too short. Mind if I smoke? Of course not. Have one? I don't mind. These are special HM ships only. We get them in a canteen. My Uncle Barnett is in the Navy. He's on a destroyer. Oh, isn't that a coincidence now? So am I. Yeah, no. He's a petty officer. They call him by a funny name. Yeah, we often call petty officers funny names. It begins with a B. It generally does. <laughs> oh, you are awful. What's your ship? Oh, well, I'm not supposed to tell you that now, am I? It's careless talk. Yeah, you can tell me. I'm in the same firm as you might say. Well, Chief Buffer, that's what he's called. He's on the Torrin. Well, it's a small world and no error. Here, Joey. Our oh, Chief Buffer's our uncle by marriage. Makes you sort of sign me his twins, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this is my friend Joey Mackridge, Miss Lewis. How do you do? Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. What's your name? Like that, wasn't it? Yes. Sort of unexpected. Yes. That long train, all them people in it. And I had to pick on that one carriage. It's fate, I shouldn't wonder. Yeah, I feel that way too. Well, I suppose we ought really to be going, huh? Yeah, I suppose we ought. Well, your family will be wondering what's happened to you. <laughs> well, I'm wondering that myself. Well, can you? Does, uh, does your aunt let you go out much? Oh, yes, she doesn't mind. Well, not so long as I don't get back too late. Well, what's the matter with tomorrow night, then? Yeah, we might go to the old pally to dance. Do you like dancing? Oh, yes. Well, that's a date, then. 6.30 under the clock, Victoria Station. Oh, you don't waste much time, do you? <laughs> well, I can't afford to. I've only got short weekend leave. Oh, it's not very long, is it? <laughs> Come in and meet my mum and dad. Oh, no, not now. I'd really rather not. I've got to be getting along. And they wouldn't want a stranger butting in. Hey, you're not a stranger. Not anymore. Ah, oh, but to them I would be. Give me that bag, there's a dear. Not until you say it's OK about tomorrow night. Oh, you are awful. 6.30 under the clock, Victoria Station. All right. Cross your heart and hope to die. I cross my heart and hope to die. So long, Frida. So long, Shorty.
Mom. Shut him, Blake! Oh! You ought to be ashamed of yourself and no mistake. Your telegram only arrived half an hour ago. Never said what time you was coming or nothing. Well, I'm here, OK, aren't I? Sound in wind and limb. You can't grumble. Oh, you bad boy, you. <laughs> May! Well, how's the war going, son? See any submarines? Hundreds. Sunk 14 last week and a couple of cruisers thrown in. Oh, <laughs> oh man, he's living, isn't he? In the last war, I was in a convoy once. Put a I... sock in it, Fred. We've had quite enough about all what you did in the last war. Dad? Yes, old man? Where'd you first meet Mum? <laughs> Why, well, whatever made you think of asking that? We was in a train coming back from Urn Bay. Well, it's a small world and no error. Mum, can I leave my bridge out while she was home? It was fate, wasn't it? You drink your tea up, me lad, and don't talk so soft. They're <laughs> 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 coming over again. Get down and keep your heads low. Everybody, please, That's steady, a nice smile. <laughs> it seems only yesterday was in his crap. Hold it. Smile on. Cheerio, Mrs. Blake. Oh, it does sound funny, doesn't it? You'll get used to it. Oh, well, there's one thing I shall never get used to, and that's you going away all the time. Well, it's your own fault for marrying a sailor. That's fairly asking for trouble, that is. Can't trust any of an inch. Wives in every port, always coming home unexpected and catching you having tea with the lodger. Oh, well, I'm the one that'll be the lodger if I'm going to live with Kath when you're at sea. I've been for a whole week yet. Think of it. Seven old days of glorious life. You'll like being with Kath, won't you? Of course I shall. It's just you being away and me wondering what's happening to you that I won't like. Proceed with the following operations as ordered. One, give us a kiss. Two, chuck us another of mum's sandwiches. Three, cheer up and remember this isn't a funeral, it's an honeymoon. And four, give us another kiss. Now then, ship's coming in, chan! <laughs> oh, little shocks, you're crashing me blood. <laughs> Someone will see you. Oh, God! <laughs> Hello, Blake. What are you doing here? I'm on my honeymoon, sir. Well, that's splendid. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is my wife, Mrs. Blake. How do you do? Well, pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Alex, come and meet one of my shipmates and his wife. They've just been married. Ordner Seaman Blake, Mrs. Blake, my wife. How do you do? Thank you, ma'am. I hope you'll be very happy. Thanks, sir. We're old friends. He practically saved my life when I came on board the other day. My foot slipped on the gangway and I nearly as anything fell overboard. Do you remember? Yes. Are you going to live in Plymouth? Yes, that is, when he goes to sea again. Chief Petty Officer Hardy is her uncle by marriage, sir, so uh, she's going to live at their place for the duration, as you might say. But we're uh, spending the next few days in Torquay. Very nice, too. Just you begin as you intend to go on, Miss Blake. Keep him in order. My wife rules me with a rod of iron. It's really been quite successful so far, hasn't it, darling? Don't talk such nonsense. I'm never allowed to have my own way over anything. Well, we won't interrupt you any longer. Don't forget to report him to me if he doesn't behave himself. Goodbye, and very best of luck. Uh -huh. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Goodbye for the present, sir. Goodbye. Have a good time. Enjoy your leave. Thank you, sir. Coincidence about them going to Torquay for their honeymoon, wasn't it? Yes, I thought about that at the time, but I didn't want to go on about it. That first quarrel we had, do you remember? When you went stamping off to listen to the band all by yourself and came back in tears half an hour later? That was only because they were playing the Blue Daniel. You know, that always makes me feel sort of pent up and emotional. That wasn't why you were in tears, and it's no use you pretending it was. If I was in tears at all, which I hardly deny, it was probably because that was the very first time I discovered what a horrible, disagreeable character you have. Still, it was a good honeymoon as honeymoons go. Went awfully quickly. Oh, <laughs> stop it, Teddy. I refuse to be made sentimental in the middle of a great Western lunch. Eat up your delicious piece of railway fish and behave yourself. Damn. It's 
the matter? That thing positively haunts me. I have to give my eye teeth for a chance of a show like that. Never mind, darling. There'll be lots of other shows and lots of other chances before the war's over. Some damn poet at some time or other wrote a very appealing little piece about the tiny feet of the rain. There's a man I'd like to meet. <laughs> I'd kill him. Well, I'm going down to the wardrobe. Keep a stiff upper lip, old boy. <laughs> Five on six, two on three, and ten, just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> doctor hasn't ordered a damn thing, apart from a few doses of cascara and one splint since the ship commissioned it. That, I may say, is what's getting the doctor down. Years of expensive medical training resulting in complete atrophy. The doctor wishes he was dead. Someone give the doctor a drink. Mitchell, a glass of port for the doctor. Thank you. Yes, sir. There, just the girl I wanted. You do have the damnedest luck. Skill, old boy. Sheer undiluted skill. The usual triumph of mind over matter. It's a stinking awful night. Oh, hello, number one. Mitchell, a gin for the first lieutenant. Thanks, yes, Lord. Sea's getting up and I've got the middle watch. Hey, stop. You should put the ten on the nine. Oh, I never noticed that damn thing. Hmm. Here's peace, peace, perfect peace with loved ones far away. Feeling all right, old man? Yes, why? Sure there's nothing wrong, not running a temperature or anything? No, of course not. Oh, any wonder. First time you haven't been late for a watch since pre-commission. Uh, two minutes early. I'm sorry, sir. It won't occur again, sir. Men in green, bring out, vessel on fire! Yes? Captain, sir, vessel on fire, bearing green 3 0. Press the alarm rattlers. in the Turkish air and surrounded by gorgeous girls and some fettiness to go and sell old Banksy station. I wonder why he was pinching me.
Stop, Starshell! Starshell, check, check, check! One. Let's take bulkheads are being shored up. We'll look as if they'll be all right, sir. But there's a good deal of damage off. Looks as if we'll be a nice sitting target when it gets light. Is Captain D alive? Yes, old chap. You haven't succeeded to the command of this flotilla yet. What did you do to Jerry? One, one. The rest escaped in a smoke. But one was badly damaged. Not too bad. Tell Tankroot to take me in tow. Aye, aye, sir. How far are we from home, pilot? About 120 miles, sir. Snorri. Sir? Ask the first lieutenant if he's all ready to tow for it. Aye, sir. We've got all the guns working in hand, sir. Good. We shall need them, I expect. Well, Blake. Thermo. How are you feeling? Uh, fine, sir, thank you. Got concussed a bit, didn't you? Ye yes, sir, I think I did, sir. The first lieutenant tells me that you stood by the gun even when most of the crew were knocked out. Is that true? Uh, well, sir, uh, somebody had to do it, sir. You did damn well. I'm very proud of you. Thank you, sir. I want to see my captain. All right, old man. I'm here. Don't try to talk. Just rest. Kids holding all right, number one? Yes, sir. They're taking it very well. How far have we made good the last two days, pilot? We're about halfway there, sir.
won't be here soon. A nice nippy little fighter squad. Neat but not gaudy. That's what we've won. I wish they'd get a move on. Little time, old boy. I'm sick of wallowing about here like a sitting duck. It gives me the jitters. comfortable we're all to retire. There are one or two things I want to say to you. First, first I want to tell you that I'll hold a short memorial service next Sunday for our 36 shipmates who lost their lives and return thanks that the old ship herself came safely through with so many of her complement. I expect that Hitler is even now conferring the Iron Cross on the man who claims to have sunk us. Secondly, I want to tell you that you all did pretty well in the trying time we've been through. When a torpedo hits so small a ship as a destroyer, the result is bound to be fairly devastating, if not fatal. And I can understand the tremendous temptation to think of your own skin first and of the ship and your shipmate second. I suppose in a way it's gratifying to feel that out of a ship's company of 244 men, 243 have behaved as I hoped and expected they would. One man, however, did not. That man has been brought before me, charged with leaving his post without permission. I needn't tell you how serious an offence of this nature is in time of war, nor how drastic is the punishment that normally follows. You will be surprised, therefore, to learn that I have let him off with a caution. Or perhaps I should say with two cautions. One to him and one to me. For in a way I feel that what happened was my fault. This man has only been in the Navy for six months. He has only been in this ship for two months. Even so, I feel that in that time I should have been able to make it clear to him that I did not expect and would not tolerate such behaviour. I feel that I should have been able to get at least that much of my creed across, but I've failed. I will not punish a man for an action for which I must hold myself largely to blame. But I should like you all to know that after this, there will be no more cautions. The next time you run into trouble, and as leader of a striking force, this ship's bound to be in plenty more scraps, I know that come what may, no one will fail to do his duty to the very end. Thank you all for making my task so easy. And the Torrin, a ship to be so very proud of. Carry on, number one. Aye, aye, sir. Ship's coming, eh? Turn! Turn forward. This. This! Okay, I've got to close up now. It's no use your staying on any longer. You can't have any more to drink. It's after hours. Well, what's the matter with having some music? If you've got a penny, you can have it. If you haven't, you can't. I have. Well, put it in the slot then. That's what it's there for. Oh, well. Anything more before we close? Look here, miss. Judging by all I've had tonight, I ought to be drunk, see? I want to be drunk. I want to be drunk more than I've ever wanted anything in my whole life. Who says sailors don't care? <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Goodbye, Frida. Don't go over exerting yourself now. Sure, okay. Be good. Go on, Frida. Go on up to the gate with him. I'll wait here. You shouldn't have come, really. You know, it's bad for you. Oh, no, don't be silly. It'd be much worse sitting at home. Besides, we've had extra half hour together. It doesn't seem so bad this time, somehow. Perhaps I'm getting used to it. Come on, give us a kiss, Nobby. No sense hanging about. All right. Now nah, then, none of that. Go on, beggar boy. Don't get your feet wet. forget about having the mower mended. That's right. And if things do get bad, you can always go to Dorothy's, can't you? They'll have to be good and bad before I do that. <laughs> All right, obstinate. Cheerio. Cheerio. All your Packards and all your Cadillacs, and you know what you can do with them. Give me a Rolls Royce every time. You're old fashioned, that's what you are. Time marches on, you know. What are the king of? A Daimler. I suppose you think that's old fashioned, too. Well, so it is compared to a snappy 1940 Packard. You couldn't have the king whizzing along the streets in a flash roadster, could you? Who said anything about roadsters? I said before, and I'll say it again. There isn't nothing on land or sea to touch a good old conservative British mate. Give me a Daimler every time. You wanted a Rolls Royce just now. You can't have both, you know. Looks like profiteer. Now look here, old man. I'll give it a rest, will you? I will. How do you spell paupers? P-O-R-P-O-U-S, I suppose. Why? I was trying to explain to my missus we've been escorting a convoy of them. Anybody seen the chief after the royal raspberry he got this morning? Poor old chief here. He hasn't been into lunch yet. <laughs> 
Hello, Chief. We were just talking about you. Damn nice of you, I'm sure. Are you making any more filthy vapors? You shut up, guns. I've had enough of all that. Oh, I thought it looked very attractive. All those clouds of dense black smoke belching from the funnel. I'll thank you all to lay off it. <laughs> Never mind, Chiefy. I must say, old Tremoyne went one better round about ten o'clock. I thought she was on fire. Bring me some food, Mitchell. Yes, sir. Have your sparkers picked up any tidbits about the war? No, not since yesterday. Pretty bad show. My young brother's in the BEF. He wasn't far from GHQ in Arras. God knows where he is now. The whole thing's been a lash-up. Now, you probably all know what we've got to do, don't you? The whole of the British Expeditionary Force is falling back on Dunkirk. Now, in peacetime, as you know, there's a lot of leg-pulling between the services. But the soldiers are our brothers in arms, and it's up to us to get them off so that they can live to fight again. Let them see how much we admire the way they fought. And don't forget, the success of our evacuation is measured by the smallness of the military casualties, not the naval ones. The soldiers are our guests, and their lives will be in our hands. You can't hurt the cocoa and you can save your teeth. Here you are, champ. The champagne will be along in a minute. That'll be hot too. Come on, Joey, up this way. Mind your backs, please. Excuse me. The woman's work is never done. Here you are, mate. Coming up. Here you are. Hey, don't you want none? Can't hold it, son. My hair's gone wonky. Go oh, off, mate. Here, yeah, Joey, give us a couple of them biscuits. Yeah, here you are. Here, don't gulp it now. You'll chuck yourself. Thanks, son. Why did we never think of this for elevenses in the mess, Jasper? It's damn good. It's just ordinary bottle, rather heavily laced with sherry. Four twenty. How's the old country looking now, sir? I feel as if I've been away for years. We've been away quite a while, too. We put it up north every now and again to refuel. The country's looking much the same as usual the last time I saw it. Gentle, you know, not exactly smug, not exactly warlike either. There'll always be in England, eh? Well, I suppose that's as good a conviction as any. Good deal better than most, if I may say so, sir. Huh? Good deal better than most, if I may say so. Here, yeah, tell me it's a nice cup of cocoa. Want the biscuit? Go on, leave it. You might fancy it later. I never thought I'd be so glad to see a cup of cocoa. That's right. Shall I have another go? Come on. Come on, Tom, it's better with your boots, all. Oh, and what a swallow. You're lovely. Have some more. We're getting quite close. Good old white cliffs of Dover. Look better with the sun on them. Still can't have everything, I suppose. We haven't lucky to see them at all, sir. Quite right, Jasper. Haven't had a chance to thank you for all you've done for Skinross. The Navy's put up a fine show. I hope you don't think we're not grateful. Perhaps you'll get a dime by night when you get a spot of leave. Thanks, I'd love to. Good. Well, we'd better get below, Jasper, start lining up the troops. I expect you'll be wanting to push off again as soon as possible. Yes, you've struck rather a busy day. <laughs> well, goodbye for the present. Goodbye. Forgive me for not coming down with you. Goodbye, sir. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Good luck. Just ordinary Bovril and Sherry. Just ordinary Bovril and Sherry. Good. Thanks.
Big fight! Big fight! Big fight! Big fight! If I wouldn't sit down, I'd give him a cheer. And that's no error. Number one. Ready, Let it go aft. Pull on your spring forward. Slow ahead, starboard pilot. You never think there was a war on, would you? But there isn't. Not just for a minute, that is. We've got five more whole days. Flat calm. Looks like a piece of grey silk, doesn't it? My auntie had a dress that colour once and she sent it to the cleaners and it come back all spotter. Funny. I think this is such a little island, isn't it? now and France is only 20 miles from England. Makes you think, don't it? Bobby, it's your father won't eat sausage roll. That's probably because you've spoiled him, so did Look, Bobby, that one diving's a hurricane. No, it isn't, that's them E109. Like the one they brought down last Tuesday. Bobby, don't speak with your mouth full. What a perfectly lovely day it's been. Lovely for us, I mean. I suppose that's very selfish of me, isn't it? Extremely. I can't believe it's so dreadfully wrong to forget the war now and again. When one can, just for a little. I think it's very clever of you, with all hell breaking loose immediately over our defenceless heads. I made the most tremendous effort and pretended it wasn't real at all. They were toys having a mock battle just to keep us amused. It's the most shameful confession. Sheer escapism. I don't care. It has been a lovely day. The sun's been shining and the country looks so green and sweet and peaceful. And you are on leave, even if it's only till the day after tomorrow. Teddy, I wonder where we shall all be this time next year. A lot might happen between now and this time next year. Take care of yourself, my darling. It was a good honeymoon while it lasted. smiled gently and began again. The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright. This cocoa gets thicker and thicker every night. It's warm in any house, it lines the stomach, as you might say. Well, it's practically porridge. There goes another lot, sir. Looks as if poor old Plymouth's going to get it again. Well, I will say one thing for that bit of fish. There may not have been much of it, but what there was was tasty. It's that Mr. Morgan. He always favours us. It's Frida that gets around him. The moment we got him to shut this morning up, he'd come with a cheer as if we was wrong. Oh, he's all right if only he wasn't quite so nosy. How are you feeling, dear? Fine, thank you. That letter from Shorty must have cheered you up. Oh, I wish he was home. And I wish that ship would get a bit damaged, not so that anyone was hurt, mind you, but... Well, just so as he could get a little bit of leave. Never mind, dear. Men must work and women must weep. That's what I always say. That sink's topped up again. Never rains, but it pours. We'd better get Mr. Luton in. He was split south last week. Don't know where he's moved to. Anybody see my scissors? Yes, I've got them here now. Thanks, dear. Oh, dear, they are again. But glad you they were last night. Don't 
down to the shelter, Frida. Oh, please don't start all that again, Auntie. You know I hate being shut up down there. It makes me feel sick. I'd much rather stay up here. I would, really. But in your condition, dear, I honestly think... No use, but... Mother. Why don't you leave her alone? It's all very fine. You'd be in so calm and collected. But I tell you one thing, here and now, my nerves won't stand much more of this night after night, and that's the truth. You can go down to the shelter if you want to. Nobody's stopping you. Try as I may, I can't understand why you won't shut up the house and evacuate. I told you why I'm blue in the face. When you could go away somewhere quiet, Seems just plain silly to sit here and ask for it. Could go away. Where, I should like to know? Well, it's Dorothy for a start. She's got a spare room. Thank you for nothing. I've slept in it. It may be a bit pokey, but it's safe. Now, once and for all, Mother, will you do me a favour and shut up about this? I've told you how I feel, and that's that. This is Walter's home, see? And he expects to find me in it when he comes back on leave. What do you suppose he'd think if he turned up unexpected one day and found the house locked up and me hiding somewhere in the country? Might only have a few hours. That'd be a nice thing, wouldn't it? Well, you could let him know where we were, couldn't you? Oh, it's we now, is it? I thought there was a catch in it. Kathleen Hardy. Now, can you say such a thing to your own mother? Well, I'm sorry, but you make me tired sometimes, well, really, I'm you do. sure. I'm only trying to be sensible. What about the garden and Walter's bulbs that he's so proud of? We'll look after them. Oh, bulbs don't need any looking after. They just come up. Come on, Frida. Under the stairs you go. Your chair's all ready for you. Oh, I'm all right here. Can I am, really? Never mind about that. Just do as you're told. There's a good girl. We we'll leave the door open like we did before, so you won't feel lonely. <laughs> come on. I'll bring your sewing. Light's quite good in the hall. Nobody does. But there's no use in making a fuss, is there? Cheer up. There's a dear. Are you all right, Frida? Yes, thanks. If you're cold, I can run up and get you an eider down. I'm quite warm. We'll have some tea in a minute anyway, just to keep us going. Tell him I didn't want to leave the house. Yes, dear. It's all over. Don't worry. Mother and child doing well. Fourth time in three months we put into this dead and alive hole. Don't worry, cop will be off again tonight, I should wonder. I know, I know. There's no need to rub it in, but I'm chock a block with this place. Well, where could you go if you could get a shovel? Look at it. Now, the sheep and seagulls. 
Not even a tree. What are you expecting in the north of Scotland? A blinking casino? There must be one bottle of beer somewhere in Scotland. Just one wonderful bottle of beer. Well, here comes Posty anyway. Edgecombe, Blake, yeah, yeah, shorty. All right. Stick it on the table, will you? My hands are wet. Jordan, I expect it's a bill Fisher. for my finder. <laughs> Muckridge. Only one. That's right. From the young sister. After months of mucking about in the North Ruddy Sea, all I get's a letter from the young sister. Yeah, shut up, grumbling for a bit, can't you? Cheer up, it may be bad news. Oh, dear, more trouble. What's up? Some fathead left the lid off the coal hole. My old woman fell down it. <laughs> <laughs> Joey! Joey! It's come! The baby's come! It weighs seven pounds and it's a boy! Here, listen what she says. It was born in the middle of a blitz. What's the matter? Kath Hardy. Kath and her mother. The old house went and they got killed. Mrs Hardy? Yeah, well, my missus was living with him, you know. I wonder if anybody's told him. They hadn't got any kids, had they? No, they hadn't got no kids. Well, I suppose I'd better go and see you. I'd like to find him. Shorty. I, uh, just popped along to see if you had any news from home. Not so much as a postcard, but that's Kath all over. All the years we've been married, i never known I'd get a post right yet. You heard from Frida? Yeah. How's she doing? She's all right. Boy, what's the matter? It's Kath Waller. She and Mrs. Lennon. You see, uh, they was all in the house together and it got blitzed. What do you mean? Kath got killed. Both of them did. Frida was all right. She, uh, she was under the stairs. Oh, I see. So, uh, I thought I'd better come along and tell you. Seeing that, uh... Thanks, son. I'm, I'm much obliged. I'm, I'm much obliged. And I think I'll just go out on deck for a bit. Right out. Yeah. I'm glad Frida's all right. Yeah, she, she's fine. We, uh, we got a son. I'm glad. Congratulations. going to. Three chairs for the ship. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip. Look out, they're coming again!
Dark object floating off starboard bow, sir. Looks like a raft. You're right, Yeoman. Stand by to pick up survivors. Ah, sir. Keep up your spirits. I believe they've arrived at last. I'm glad to see you, sir. Thanks, number one. Captain sends his compliments. The hopes are all right, sir. Fine, thank you. Tell him from me. I warned him. He won't get command of this flotilla yet. It was extraordinary luck finding you, sir. Chief Yeoman spotted you at the last moment. Just about to give up. How many of my men have you picked up? Ninety, all told, sir. Some of them are pretty badly knocked apart, I'm afraid. Where are they? Mostly between decks, sir. Dive bombing's been put in since... Here we go again. Anybody got any flit? Anybody happen to know where we're going? Alexandria, I expect. <laughs> Join the Navy and see the world. Looks to me it's going to be the next world. <laughs> All right, come on. Glad you're OK, sir. Thanks, sir. Well, we're getting a bit worried about you, sir. Not if I can go swim before breakfast. That's right, sir. That's it, stop. Give me a piece of paper and a pencil. Son, I can't quite hear. tell you something, strictly between you and I, I'm scared stiff and it's no good pretending I'm not. If I could be at a gun or something, I shouldn't mind, but this sitting about and asking for it's beginning to get me down. Brace up, remember Nelson. Yeah, look what happened to him. <laughs> Oh, no! 
right. What is it? It's not. It's from him. He sent a telegram. It's from him himself. It's all right. My boy's all right. But the ship went down, didn't it? It said so in the papers. Look. Okay, love. <laughs> there, there, dear. There is nothing to cry about no more. Shall I wait for an answer? Oh, just a minute, I'll see. Can we go down to the village after tea, Mummy? I want to go on my bicycle. I want to go on my bicycle too. You can't. You've got a flat tire. But I'm going to pump it up again. The girl's waiting for an answer, Moon. There's no answer. Tell Mrs. Bates and John it's from the captain and everything's all right. I'm so glad, Mum. Thank you, Emily. Darling, it's from Derry. He was picked up and taken to Alexandria. He's quite safe. Oh, Mummy, Mummy, Mummy! Ship's company! Hun! Ship's company present, sir. Thank you, Torps. Stand amazing, please. Ship's company, stand at ease. Stand easy. Come a little closer. I've come to say goodbye to the few of you who are left. We've had so many talks, and this is our last. I've always tried to crack a joke or two before, and you've all been friendly and laughed at them. But today, I'm afraid I've run out of jokes. I don't suppose any of us feels much like laughing. The Torin has been in one scrap after another, but even when we had men killed, the majority survived and brought the old ship back. Now she lies in 1,500 fathoms, and with her, more than half our shipmates. If they had to die, what a grand way to go. For now they lie all together with the ship we loved. And they're in very good company. We've lost her, but they're still with her. There may be less than half the Torin left, but I feel that we'll all take up the battle with even stronger heart. Each of us knows twice as much about fighting, and each of us has twice as good a reason to fight. You will all be sent to replace men who have been killed in other ships. And the next time you're in action, remember the Torin. I should like to add that there isn't one of you that I wouldn't be proud and honored to serve with again. Goodbye. Good luck. And thank you all from the bottom of my heart.
Thanks, Reg. Goodbye. Yes, sir. Very best of luck, sir. Thanks, Nun. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Fisher. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Morani. Bye, Holly. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Edgecombe. Goodbye, sir. Bon voyage. Thanks, Roddy. Bye, sir. Goodbye, Macbeth. Good luck, sir. Thanks, Blake. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Hardy. Here ends the story of a ship, but there will always be other ships, for we are an island race. Through all our centuries, the sea has ruled our destiny. There will always be other ships and men to sail in them. It is these men, in peace or war, to whom we owe so much. Above all victories, beyond all loss, in spite of changing values in a changing world, they give to us, their countrymen, eternal and indomitable pride. Open fire! God bless our ships and all who sail in them.